do e-bikes suck? Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh wow. That actually did really well. Oh, oh my god, oh my god. That would have been really bad. Up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, I can't stop. What kind of ticks me off about e-bikes? E-bike life is not for me. That hurt. What's going on you guys? It's Mo Awesome from Awesome MTB. And I know we haven't done a sit down talk style video for a while. Don't worry, there is a lot of riding clips in this video and a lot of cool vlog style content that we were shooting from the past. But as the title of this video shows, this video is gonna be basically our opinions of e-bikes. It's probably one of the most asked questions for us is what do we think about e-bikes? And I feel like e-bikes kind of go hand in hand with politics nowadays. It's almost like something you don't really talk about just because there's such a strong feeling behind them, whether it's support or people who don't necessarily agree with e-bikes yet. And so we couldn't really give you guys our opinion about e-bikes without actually having ridden them ourselves. And I feel like that's, I, I gotta admit, I definitely had a strong opinion about e-bikes. If you were to ask me about a year ago what I thought about them, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan, but I also had never ridden an e-bike. So yeah, over the course of the last few months, whenever an opportunity presented itself to get on an e-bike and do some testing on it, we definitely took it up. And it was really nice to try out different types of e-bikes, as well as e-bikes with different types of systems suspension and also ride them on a variety of terrain as well. So um, I feel like after all of that testing, we're ready to give you guys our opinion on e-bikes. All right, so let's take you to our first proper ride on an e-bike. Our first real full ride on an e-bike was actually in Phoenix, Arizona. So Pivot Cycles, when we did that collaboration video with them with the tape, if you hadn't seen it, really fun video. Um, basically, they came up to us with the idea with, hey, how about you take out the Pivot Shuttles and see what the Pivot Shuttles are about? Guys at Pivot basically told us to take the Pivot Shuttle which is their e-bike, up a trail called National and back down. And so for those of you that don't know what National is, it's a very chunky trail. And to climb it, it's really technical. It requires a lot of technical skill. In my mind, before going into that ride, I basically thought we were going to fly up National Trail, fly up the climb, all the tech bits and whatnot. It was going to be a walk in the park because that's what my notion of what an e-bike was. It was a bike that would allow you to climb absolutely anything and not even really have to try that much. So I could not have been further from the truth. And in fact, that ride actually started us off, I would say on the wrong foot about e-bikes because wasn't really that fun of a ride. Enough of me talking, let's roll the footage from that e-bike test ride. Eww. So obviously right now we are a little flustered. We're searching for stuff. <laughs> Why do we have this random tubes? Are these used? <laughs> So these are the pivot shuttles that we are going to be demoing today. It's got a Fox 36 up front, DT Swiss. Oh, I guess those are probably electric bicycles. Is that what EB stands for? But um, so it's got the Fox suspension, um, really stealth looking bike. So obviously, as you guys can tell, pivot shuttle, Shimano motor down there. Um, with a DPX2 back there, which is interesting because I feel like on a on a heavy bike like this you would put the X2, but they, they're running the DPX2, so we're gonna see how that goes. What are we? We're an Eco Trail Boost. Oh, and then we can't go past that. Alright, so first section of National, this thing right here. Uh definitely really chunky and I don't know, I'm, I'm curious how the shuttle's gonna do. What I'm really scared of is the shuttle being a heavier bike is stalling out somewhere and tipping over and having that 50 pound bike or 40 pound bike, whatever it is, fall onto me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you get a lot of power, right? It's just, it's, huh. It's weird. I'm scared to committing. I'm not gonna lie, very scared to commit. I think personally, just having the power isn't enough. You still need to be able to maneuver on those rocks. Okay. Ooh. Oh, uh, yes! Yeah! We're trying out e-bikes today. Yeah, uh, how's that going? 
bad. <laughs> we don't like him. <laughs> Try and get up this line right here. Oh my god, oh my god. That would have been really bad. I did. Oh my god, my hands. Uh, E-bike life is not for me. That hurt. I'm glad we don't. I gotta come down this? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah! Hey, Hannah, how was that? Um, uh, <laughs> not the most fun going downhill. I definitely prefer the rain or my HD4, something without a motor, and something that doesn't weigh like 40, 45 pounds. Yeah. It just didn't feel smooth. It felt really clunky and just big and heavy, yeah. So, as you guys could tell, wasn't really the funnest of rides. An e-bike and technical climbing, it was very interesting because that, like I said, that notion I had where you can just fly up anything, is it true? Where I felt the struggle was is on technical climbs like that, you really kind of want to have that like engagement of your rear hub so that basically you can do those like almost eighth of a degree turn on the cranks and just kind of get a little extra power. With the e-bike, you didn't really get that performance from that motor. So basically, as soon as you went to go go on the pedal, whether you were in, uh, I believe it's trail mode or eco mode or boost mode, the power actually kind of came all at once and very consistent. So it wasn't like you can just get like that eighth of a turn out of the pedal. The other downside was, okay, so I can't pedal, then you're stuck with a 50 pound bike or whatever that pivot weighed on a very technical exposed section. So I would say going up national, not the best choice and definitely didn't really feel the fun aspect there, a lot of technical bits. So. That, that notion that e-bikes can climb absolutely anything definitely didn't turn out to be correct. It was almost like I started to like e-bikes a little bit more because I was all like, my bike is actually way funner, like my normal non-pedal assist bike. So, And then when it came to downhills, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was controlled. I went down that one chunky section on National. However, it was just a very heavy bike that you kind of had on there. And so the whole time I was thinking, if I was on my bike that was about 10, 15, 20 pounds less, I'd be having a lot more fun right now. So that was our first experience on e-bikes and those were the pivot shuttles. All right, so now is for our next ride on e-bikes. And this one was actually really fun because basically when we were in bootleg, the good guys at DVO Suspension, they had some test e-bikes there because they were starting to do a lot of testing with suspension for e-bikes. And that's actually where it kind of clicked for me. These bikes are really heavy and and so I felt like, man, suspension can act the same. And I know those pivot shuttles were spec'd with those DPX2s, but then it got me to thinking like, if a bike is 20 pounds heavier, do you still use the same suspension? And wouldn't it require like a different um, kind of spec? And wouldn't a coil be a little bit better on an e-bike? So the bike that DVO let me take out for a lot of laps was the Norco Site, I believe. Off of me talking, let's roll the footage of my test experience on the Norco Site in bootleg. Yeah. All right, so it is time for me to go for a lap. It's not on a bike you think that I would be taking out. I'm actually going to be taking out this thing, this Norco e-bike. I think they call it the Sight. And this is actually Bryson, the owner of DVO's personal bike. So hopefully I don't break it, but super pumped because it's got a really rad coil shock back there and Shimano motor. So. We'll see how uh, an e-bike does that bootleg. We're going to say bye to Bryson. Bryson. So you signed my waiver. Yeah. Right? It is my bike. But yeah, and, and then there were some cracks. Oh, yeah. yeah we fixed the handlebars because they're plastic. We glued them back together. So you should be good to go, dude. You should be good to All go. All right. Well, so. I'll see you uh, next year. Yeah, okay. Good. All right. Later, yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try and do my fastest run. All right, you guys. Let's race. Woo! I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready to sip it. Oh man. Oh, that electric? What's going on? This is an e bike. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm done with real bikes, dude. Where's my second? What up, dude? Gracias. What up, dudes? Definitely interesting vibes being on the e bike. All right, first time on anything this gnarly on eBay. Oh wow, this is so smooth. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, seems like a pillow. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh wow. It actually did really well. The bike just stuck to the ground. That was dope. <laughs> on an e-bike oh, right up here oh my god <laughs> okay so this is one of the gnarlier tracks out here if i recall correctly oh, oh whoa yeah we're still alive though up yeah oh yeah oh Woo. ah we can't stop oh my second lap. Shuttle truck just got there. It took off about five minutes ahead of me. You again? Yeah. I'd be doing it if I had one. <laughs> okay. All right. somehow. Oh. Oh, wow. oh, it's this section. Oh, this is gnarly. <laughs> oh. oh my god, this is actually pretty gnarly. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm going so fast. So as you guys can tell by like my hoots of laughter and all that stuff, I had a lot of fun on that e-bike going down. And those are some pretty gnarly trails. Basically they were the double black downhill style trails in bootleg. That's where I started to notice the stigma that comes from riding an e-bike. Because as I was making my way up what everyone else was hiking on their downhill bikes, even though all those people had shuttled, they were all looking at me funny and I can see the stairs and all that stuff. And I didn't understand it. Like we both hadn't necessarily pedaled on our own power up to that trail. But at the same time, I pedaled a little bit more than them. So I, just, I didn't understand them looking at me like I was a freak and all that stuff. So, and I felt like on the fire roads where it really kind of clicked, I was like, whoa, this is actually really cool. Rather than like shuttling or like taking forever to climb on like a pedal bike up that wash road, this feels so much better. And it was, it's, it's fire road. It's a road that a lot of people drive. And so it's kind of started to click to me where these things are optimized in terms of climbing. As soon as I started to take that thing down, even though it felt just as heavy as that pivot shuttle, man, was it fun. Like that bike felt like it stuck to the ground. After I got to the bottom of my first lap, I went up for another lap and then I was even able to go for another cross country lap in bootleg. It's a really fun experience because I was able to do all of that riding, then meet up with Hannah again at the top for her run and all this stuff um, and still have energy to basically want to ride more at the end of the day. So, and so for my final time testing e-bikes, I basically took out the Specialized Levo and the Specialized is a bike that I've heard a lot about their e-bike and I just hear a lot of really good things and normally the number one thing I hear is the motor feels so much better than the Shimano motor and the other motors out there. That specialized bike you have to keep in mind wasn't like that Norco site in the terms that that rear shock wasn't a coil shock like that Norco had um, and I hadn't really paid too much attention to the suspension settings on the specialized as I did the Norco I feel like I spent a little bit longer of a time adjusting that suspension settings on the Norco site. Um, on the Specialized, I did set the sag, get everything kind of dialed in from that front. However, I wasn't as particular with my suspension settings on there. I definitely didn't have as much fun as I did on the Norco site. And that's where I really started to gauge where, hey, these are just like normal bikes. Like you can't disregard suspension settings just because it's an e-bike. Still gonna perform the same. And if anything, it's probably gonna be a little bit more sensitive to different suspension settings and different types of suspension you're running. So All right, you ready to go down? some gnarly stuff on e-bikes yep see it i'm not really ready though <laughs> oh, oh my god oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I 
almost died. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh my God. So that was that footage of Hannah basically following me on the e-bike. And I feel like, hold on. I feel like I need to ask you. Yeah. So what did you think about taking it down bootleg? Before we went up there, you were super skeptical. You said that you basically didn't want to take it down bootleg because the terrain was so gnarly. Yeah, I mean, we went down the hardest trails in the park. That was the way to break it in. That... <laughs> I definitely felt really, really nervous on it because it was my first time ever, A, ever riding that e-bike and be riding an e-bike down really really gnarly terrain but yeah it felt it definitely felt really stable and really planted to the ground which i was surprised by i don't know why i mean it kind of makes sense it had good suspension on it and it's really weighted obviously <laughs> that's a heavy bike but um i definitely didn't have as much control over it as i would have liked um, because it was heavier? Trail bike. But, yeah, because it's heavier and it's a little bit harder to maneuver, I'd say. Especially when you're not climbing and you don't have the power of the motor. When you just have the weight of the bike and yourself, you can't, like, you don't, there's nothing to make up for it the weight of the bike as far as being able to maneuver it goes. So those were three experiences where either I took out or Hannah took out or we both took out e-bikes for some testing. So now basically this is the part where you guys are here for. Do e-bikes suck? So will I ever buy an e-bike? I don't think that I'm gonna buy an e-bike just because it just, it wasn't for me. After I took out those e-bikes and I went back to my normal bike, it's a funny story. I actually thought my brakes were seized. Um, and then when I got off, I was like, shoot, like my brakes are seized. I must have like pulled the brake when the wheel was off and the wheel spun freely. And then I went to another bike um, and I got on theirs and I pedaled that one. I was like, oh my God, this, this is insane. Like I had just finished testing the e-bikes and it made my current non-pedal assist bike feel like a horrible pedaler. And so I actually prefer the feel of my bike and normal non-pedal assist bikes on the downhills. And so that's why I don't feel like an e-bike is gonna be for me because that jump back and forth, it's never gonna be easy. Maybe it'll get a little bit easier as you get more time on them. But for me, I still appreciate how a lighter, normal enduro style bike feels on the downhill. They're poppier, they're playful, they're lighter. And then in terms of the climbing, this is where I'm gonna start getting into like, what kind of ticks me off about e-bikes? Um, or at least I should say like companies and how they're marketing. So when I was, I'm not gonna throw any companies under the bus, but I've also been asking some companies some questions about e-bikes. And normally what I get is that that generic response or, oh no, like e-bikes allow you to get an even better workout and you can basically match your current workout or go even harder and like train more and you're more exhausted. I don't, maybe I just wasn't riding that e-bike correctly. I felt like I took it up for a lot of laps, up really steep climbs at a really good cadence and pace. I never felt more tired than I felt on a normal pedaling bike. Like on a pedaling bike, I take it up a steep fire road and I am just exhausted. Like I'm freaking, everything's heaving no matter how conditioned I am, especially the steeper the fire road gets because I'm putting in that power and whatnot. And I can't see myself being more exhausted on an e-bike. So I feel like that whole thing from a marketing side, it just, I feel like bike companies need to stop having that be the push. The other thing that I was told are e-bikes are great for training for like, if you really want to do like um, high speed training and train your eyes and all that stuff. And they're probably trying to equate that to dirt bikes and like how like some riders will ride dirt bikes to get that faster pace. But on an e-bike, I didn't really feel like you could ride downhill any faster than you would on a normal pedaling bike. So I, I didn't understand that whole concept. I, I feel like a huge portion of the backlash of the mountain bike community to e-bikes I think has something to do with how companies are marketing these things. I feel like they were pushed too hard by companies and a lot of that kind of drawback, we're gonna get into the whole land access thing as well, but I definitely think that these companies and their marketing strategies for these e-bikes, that's where a little bit of the negativity is coming from. And I feel like pushing them like, oh, they're, they're gonna make you train harder, they're gonna make you speed train, all that stuff. Well, sure, like in specific cases, but here's what I felt on the e-bike. I felt like I could basically ride more when I was exhausted. So like if I had gone for like a big ride in the morning and I wanna do some more laps and bootleg and still have fun, um, I felt like I could still do that. It was, it was a fun, like, 
extra credit lot bike. Um, I felt like if I was ever like, I really hurt my knees or I really hurt my back and I needed just a little bit of extra kind of kick in there, that's where that e-bike I feel like would be really rad. It's just like a really nice bike to get a lot of riders out there and it's only gonna grow the sport as well. And that's why I don't necessarily think that people, if you don't like e-bikes, you should think about it from this way as well is, at the end of the day, these people wanna be out there cycling out there in nature. And for the most part, I know there's gonna be some bad apples out there that are gonna try and hack their e-bike and basically are just going out there and just abusing it and flying up stuff that they shouldn't be flying up. But at the same time, there's bad apples everywhere. I honestly, I've met some enduro racers who are just horrendous on the trails to hikers to the point where I'm like they're probably hurting us more than someone on an e-bike so for the most part what I thought an e-bike was going to be which is basically a bike that's going to climb up anything it wasn't that like I don't want to offend anyone here but I really didn't think the e-bike was at the end of the day that much funner than a normal pedal bike like even though I was able to yeah climb a little bit faster the downhill is still funner on my normal bike. Climbing that that feeling of exhaustion, a feeling of accomplishing something, I didn't really get from the the e-bike. I felt like, oh wow, sweet, I got up here, that was awesome, which is still great. And for some riders who may not be able to ride a normal bike, that feeling has got to be absolutely insane. And so that's only more uh, kind of pushing me towards the feeling like, hey, these things are okay. Now, like I said, the, the drawbacks of e-bikes are where I'm not a fan of them. Number one is the marketing coming from companies. So I feel like there's a lot of kind of hoopla and obviously companies want to sell bikes. So they're going to say whatever they need to say to basically sell these things. I feel like if they can take a more honest approach, they would have been received a little bit better from the general public. Um, now, here's the other thing. E-bikers that are riding these bikes on basically trails where e-bikes aren't supposed to be on, you're not really helping the situation out much. And if anything, you're probably harming mountain bike access. And so that's a, another thing. But so for something like that, like I do understand in some places, like where are you going to ride an e-bike? Like back in Orange County, a majority of trail networks out there don't allow e-bikes. And that's where I ask these bike companies, what are you guys doing for the advocacy of e-bikes because for the most part i have asked that question to a couple of bike companies like hey what are you guys doing like for e-bike advocacy like in local trailheads and for the most part not much like and at the end of the day like these bike companies that are basically making the money off of these e-bikes should be like in these rangers office saying hey this is what an e-bike is this is what they do this is what they're capable of doing in terms of growing the sport this is how they can be used for trail work this is how they can be used for uh, stewardship of the land um the bike companies should be responsible for that and so that's why like it blows me away like why more companies aren't stepping up for the advocacy for e-bikes because at the end of the day it shouldn't be a fight between e-bikers and mountain bikers like no matter what side of the spectrum you fall on like that's not it shouldn't be a thing like bike companies that are making this money in my opinion should be leading the charge for advocacy of those e-bikes so that the money that they're making they can feel good about and whatnot but just my opinion so to summarize everything, I felt like e-bikes, they're, they're not funner than normal bikes. I still prefer my normal bike. Will I ever buy an e-bike? Most likely not until I actually need one maybe later down the line. For the most part, I think of e-bikes as like that N plus one bike, where if I had enough money to basically have a bunch of bikes, it would probably be like, I would say like my fourth or fifth or maybe even sixth bike. I still feel like there's a lot of other bikes that I would probably buy first. And so you're not gonna be able to fly up anything on an e-bike. They're not basically funner than normal bikes going down. They might be for some people who might only have that option or some people who prefer bikes that are a little on the heavier side. But that's just my opinion. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comment section. And just really quick to end this off, I need to ask Hannah, what, what's her opinion on e-bikes? So what's your opinion? I mean, they're fun. <laughs> We're just going to leave it at that. So this is why I, I wasn't doing the talking. This is why Mo was doing the talking, you guys, because literally I don't care. <laughs>